So we're in the process of restoring this Pro DGX and uh, we've uh, recapped the machine, <clears throat> we've fixed the keyboard and the touch sensor, uh, but we still have some issues with uh, some of the touch sensor effects. Uh, I'll lower the, the case a little. And you can see that the touch sensor is working. That's the pitch bend. Uh, but growl, vibrato, and a repeat all don't work. And uh, all of those are processed, those effects are all processed on board D. This is the, the, the board with the touch sensor switches. So there's a LFO, uh, there's a couple of LFOs, one for the vibrato and one for the growl. And uh, it, it looks like both of these effects are not working. So there's something that's kind of universally causing this to fail. Um, on this board. So first thing, let's make sure that we have uh, power to the board, the per correct power. So uh, this, this jumper, uh, this, uh, this ribbon cable here is the source of the power. So we can uh, verify that all the rails are correct. So there's ground, minus 15, and plus 15. So we're getting power to the board. And the, the, for the next thing we can check is to make sure that the, uh, the pot uh, is working. So I'm gonna kinda go around to the back so I don't obstruct your view of this. And I'll probe the potentiometer. I can figure out where it is. Maybe right here. And uh, I'm adjusting that, and I see that the, the voltage level is changing, so the potentiometer is fine. Uh, the next stop, if we're looking in the schematic, is the LFO. Uh, there's a, uh, an op amp here, so let's check the input to the op amp. Well, that, that wouldn't really make a difference. Let's check the output of the op amp, so pin 7 of this... Uh, dual op amp and there's no no oscillating action going on there let's check the input also really no also a very minimal movement I can make this a little uh, finer resolution no, nothing's really happening there. So let's uh, verify power to the op amp. So uh, pin four is the uh, minus 15. Right. So uh, we're getting the negative rail is there and pin eight is the plus 15 and it's uh, at negative 2.2. So uh, we're not getting power to the, to the op amp. So I'm gonna take this board out and, and try to find out where the power is going, where the plus 15 is, is going, and why it's not making it to that op amp for the LFO to work for this effect. So I'm gonna pull the board out and, uh, and I'll get back to you shortly. So I'm taking a look at the uh, circuit board and uh, on the bottom side uh, where we measured the, uh, the plus 15, uh, I followed it through and it, it goes to this, uh, this trace here on the top and uh, on that I measure negative 2.2. Uh, so I took a, a, I measured for continuity between the, the top and the bottom and, and uh, the, there's some resistance there. It should be zero ohms resistance. It should just be the connector going through the board to the bottom, but it looks like we might have a broken uh, solder uh, pad or a broken trace there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to desolder. This is a hardwired connector. Usually they're socketed on one end and, and not on the other end. What I'm going to do is I'm going to desolder this and I'm going to put an IC socket there to mate with this and we'll see if that resolves the problem. 
So I've soldered a, uh, a socket here and I've also gone through, I snapped a picture of the top of the board because this isn't plated through hole. You have to be very sure that you connect the top traces to the bottom ones. Uh, so I went through and I measured the continuity between the, uh, the IC socket and these unplated, uncoated uh, traces uh, to make sure that there was continuity there. I've also pulled off this uh, old cable. Uh, you know, it didn't fare so well when it was being unsoldered or desoldered from the board. Uh, plus, also these uh, they don't tend to be very good. Uh, I've seen uh, pro connections uh, connectors be problems before. Uh, so I'm going to replace this, and then I'll hook everything back up, and we'll see if that that did the trick. So we socketed this, uh, we replaced this cable, put a socket on this side and made sure that there was continuity between the cable and uh, all the traces on the board. And uh, now we'll test it out. So the first thing we're going to test is repeat. It's working. Uh, vibrato. So uh, we're going to clean up the switch, but it looks like the functionality of uh, those three dead effects, growl, vibrato, and repeat, are now working. So uh, we'll clean up the switches and put everything back together, and then we're going to do a calibration to make sure, uh, to make, see if we can get those, uh, like the bass sound, sounding like a bass. So we've completed the calibration, and the bass voice is still not sounding right. Uh, it still doesn't, does not, does not sound like, like a bass. Uh, so there's a troubleshooting procedure that you can follow to find out what exactly is, is going wrong with a particular voice. Uh, and for each voice they show the flow chart through the different sections of the synthesizer and waveforms of what it should look like on an oscilloscope. So I've, uh, gotten to hear, this is the, uh, electric bass resonator bank 3 and uh, I was probing this test point 25 which is the output of this uh, op amp and the uh, output looks nothing like the picture in the uh, in the service manual so what I did then is I, I was taking a look at um, the, the actual resonator. This test point 25 shows the output of all resonators. So I actually went and I looked for the uh, the electric bass resonator. Uh, so this shows the signal coming into it and the signal coming out of it. So it's um, the electric bass resonator isn't working uh, with the synthesizer turned off. I used a meter to probe continuity between the ROM here, which enables the electric bass resonator, and uh, that that point where we lost the 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 signal, and uh, there's no connection there. So there's either cracked solder joint or something else is going on here. Uh, I see someone kind of like soldered a, a jumper wire on one of the pins of the ROM. So uh, I'm going to take the board out and have a look and see if, uh, if I can get that resolved. So in the process of troubleshooting why the electric bass resonator wasn't uh, working, at first I thought there was a, uh, a broken connection between the uh, ROM and the resonator, uh, and that wasn't the case. There, there was continuity there. And when I was poking around on it, uh, I found that the, the voice code wasn't correct. Uh, so there's a 5-bit voice code that uh, in, 
has these ROMs enable or disable signal paths. The voice code is set on the voice selection uh, board and the electric bass voice code is 11100. So it comes out of this board into board B here and we can verify that the, the voice code is set correctly. So here is A is 1, uh, B is 1, C is 1, D is 0, E is 0. So it leaves this board and it comes into board D, which is the touch sensor effects board. And we can verify that it's coming in there correctly. Uh, the blue wire is actually A. Uh, so there it's a uh, 1, 1, 1, 0, 0. So the, the code is coming out of this board correctly, in here correctly, over here correctly. And then it leaves this board uh, on this ribbon connector and comes down to the, this board where, where it's not correct. And it leaves here on this connector, which uh, actually looks kind of like a mess. Uh, there's missing uh, solder pads and uh, it, yeah, it looks kind of messy. But well, let's check the code. One. One, one, zero, one. So uh, the code is changing somewhere on this uh, board D. Uh, it's entering correctly and it's leaving incorrectly. And uh, we can do a quick test to see if this is going to fix our problem uh, by, so this is what, what the bass sounds like presently. And what I can do is I can jump that output uh, bit E to ground, and we can see if it uh, enables the resonator like it should. And it is. So, uh, so the problem is somewhere actually on board D, and uh, I'll pull that board out, and we'll have a look and see if there's any continuity there between where it comes in and where it goes out. It should just be uh, zero ohms, uh, just straight going through, but we'll have a look and see what's going on. So I've got board B removed, and uh, this is where it, it comes in from uh, board B, and this is uh, where we uh, replaced a... Uh, where we had a, a broken uh, trace or a cracked solder joint earlier. You can see there's solder pads missing. Someone had worked on this board and, and they did a sloppy job. This is kind of what the one that I haven't touched yet looks like. And you can see this pin 9, which is the output of E, is missing a solder pad. Um, so let's check continuity between uh, pin, I can do this without blocking, pin 8 where it comes in and we know it's good and pin 9 where it comes out and uh, yeah there's there's no continuity there so what we're gonna have to do is something similar to what we did for this connector is we're gonna have to remove this uh, I think this one is socket let's see yeah there's a there's a socket here so we're gonna remove this socket and put a new socket in and make sure that there's continuity between the socket and all the traces that, that should have connection both on the top and the bottom of the board. So we're going to do that and then uh, come back with you. So I pulled that connector off uh, and you can see that every, nearly every solder pad was destroyed under there. There were little bits of wire going through the board. You can see some of the traces uh, lifted in the back and some jumper wire that, that, that someone had used uh, on the back side. Uh, where, where am I looking? Here, there's like nearly every solder pad is, is, is ruined. So I'm going to have to come up with something uh, clever to, uh, to get this connector uh, back and solid. So... Um, I'll show you what I do. 
So I redid the connection between the touch sensor board and the filter board, and now the voice code can uh, get correctly transmitted, and uh, our bass voice sounds like a bass. Uh, our flute sounds more fluty. So we've uh, we fixed that problem. So we've completed the restoration now of this keyboard. We uh, recapped the entire keyboard. We changed the bushings on the keys to make them not clack. So when you uh, when you play them, they're they're pretty quiet. They're all you hear is the the wire uh, contacting the bus bar, which you should hear. Uh, we leveled the key bed. Um, there were some notes that were kind of uh, crackling when you sustain them, and that was resolved with the recapping of the keyboard. We replaced the touch sensor, so the touch sensor effects now work. We also resolved some uh, connection issues that caused some of the touch sensor effects not to work, and uh, also some of the voices to sound weird. Uh, we calibrated it so everything will track properly from octave to octave and uh, this is all complete and ready for someone to enjoy. I should add another thing that we did was we also did an upgrade to the voltage controlled filter sub-module to improve the cutoff frequency. So that's another improvement that we did to this keyboard while we worked on it. And no synthesizer restoration video would be complete without a shot of the uh, all the junk that came out of the keyboard that we restored. So we changed some ribbon cables. These are the old bushings, electrolytic capacitors, tantalum capacitors, ICs, sockets, resistors, and the sliders that we replaced with the LED sliders. So. Uh, on my website, synthchaser.com, I sell replacement parts for the R Pro Soloist and Pro DGX. I sell the bushings kit. Uh, if you contact me, I can get you the cables. I sell capacitor kit, the filter enhancement kit, uh, and the LED sliders. Um, so this is Synth Chaser saying thanks for watching. And if you have any questions about the restoration of this keyboard, uh, please post in the comments. Thanks.